Hey everybody, Danny from Mouse of I here. Uh, just wanted to give a big thanks to Gruff for first of all hitting us up. Uh, if you haven't heard Gruff, they're from Louisiana and they just finished their tour. Uh, they came through Florida and uh, they happened to stop by and come to talk to us, which I thought was pretty cool. So thank you for that. Don't forget to check them out. You can find them on Facebook, Spotify, Bandcamp. It's G-R-U-P-H, Gruff. So please give them a listen and we really hope that you guys enjoy this podcast. Um, we do have a couple dates coming up here. So come and check us out. Uh, we'd love to meet you if you are a fan of the podcast and, <laughs> and happen to be in one of these states. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoy the podcast and thank you for all the new subscribers. I mean, it, it's it's been it's been pretty cool to see. Uh, and thank you for the comments too. I mean, <laughs> someone someone said I look like Dwight Schrute, which I <laughs> I mean I don't know if that's a compliment. I have no I don't think it is. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching and I uh, hope you enjoy this podcast. Bye. Hello and welcome to the House of I podcast. Today we have Gruff. What's up, guys? What's going on? Cheers, by the way. Cheers. We're happy to be here. Yes. yes. It's good. It's good. All right. So, um, I guess like the first thing that I that I saw on your I guess on your about is that you guys are from Louisiana. Is that where you're originally from? Is that where you guys were born? Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Salt oh, yeah. for Louisiana. Okay. Cool. Because I do hear like an accent as well, but. You know, there's people in Tampa as well that have accents, and it's just like, I don't know, do you guys think I have an accent, for example? Not really. No. <laughs> yeah, but I've heard, yeah. like, whenever I say my, my, and bye, my, yeah. and shit like that, yeah. yeah, it comes out. I'm not gonna lie, I love, I love accents, so yeah, whenever I hear a cool. different one, man, I'm just like, I just, I can just listen to it forever, man, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. So, how is it, how is it growing up in Louisiana? How, like, how do you th- feel it would be different from maybe growing up in Florida? Well, there's beautiful landscapes here y'all got beaches uh there there's you know a bit of swamp um y'all you know we both have the alligators mm-hmm. uh going so right <laughs> Hell yeah. uh, well we're from a town that uh that has a big like chemical industry there okay. so um that's like the big job to do so here it seems like it's a little bit more there's options yeah really yeah, <laughs> yeah i don't know it's it's just uh the main place to, to get a gig, you know, to get a job is that these, these plants, they make like a foam for, for car seats and stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, there's, there's not really a big music scene there. That's why we, we decided we were like, we got to go on a tour. We got to get out of here. Really? Yeah. That's actually something I was going to ask. Cause like, how far are you from like New Orleans, for example? Three and a half hours. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're not even like in a good spot in Louisiana. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. We are playing our first show in New Orleans, uh, March though. So. Really? Yeah. Oh fuck yeah. Yeah, Bank Street Bar, which is a, a nice. I was I tried to email them a couple times, and uh, then finally a a band that we, our friend Sarah introduced us to, uh, they they were like, hey, can y'all play? Can y'all play Bank Street? And we we're like, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like a where a lot of like the punk bands started out, or you know, play play some pretty good shows there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's that because our so are you kind of like familiar with the scene in New Orleans at all? Uh, not really. One of our good buddies, uh, Chris Lanthier, and uh, our friend Cameron Doty, they used to be in a band that were kind of big in the scene there called Bougie and the High Rise, and uh, they've you know introduced us to people or showed us all the a lot of the bands down there. But uh, I used to live down there for a little while, but I just kind of had a job and didn't go to, you know, didn't go to a bunch of shows. I lived in Metairie, which is outside of new Orleans is like 30 minutes outside. Mm -hmm. So I just got in the routine of going to work and going home and stuff. Yeah. So So like, I guess basically what you're saying is like, you're more involved now in like the scene, like music, I guess the music scene now than you have been in the past. Uh, yeah, well there's not really a big music scene. We do a lot of stuff just at, you know, like our, our albums we recorded at the, at the well, the, the newest one at the house and the old one at a, a place that we rented, like a studio space that we we rented the room at. Um, but yeah, there's so so I mean, this is us trying to connect with different scenes, us going on a, on a little tour, you know, as us, uh, but but yeah, as far as uh, Lake Charles goes, there's like a couple metal bands there, and there's a lot of cover cover bands and stuff like that. There's some casinos where we're from, so they're they really? get a lot of that, 
you know yeah cover band shit yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah that's that that's a, surprisingly there's a lot of that in florida too there's a lot of cover bands and obviously like hey if you're making money you know i oh, get yeah. it you know you're playing yeah. music it's right it's cool but it does i feel like it can hurt like originally like original music you know what i'm saying oh absolutely like, basically like here a lot there's a lot more demand i feel and this is kind of contrary to what i said outside but um there's a there's a big demand for like cover bands like places are more willing to have a cover band play than have like an original band play you know they want you to kind of like do a little bit of both if anything and obviously that hurts our scene you know what i'm yeah. saying but you yeah. will get paid though that's true <laughs> yes <laughs> they I mean, but pay you. Nice. which is yeah it's nice to get paid and play but um yeah definitely like, it would be nice to just get paid for original music you know <laughs> yeah yeah um okay so then when did you guys start listening to music i guess the music that you're influenced by I mean, me, it's middle school, dude. Yeah. Yeah, my our friend Barrett showed me like Minor Threat and the Misfits and shit, and that was it. Yeah, you know? couldn't go back. So that was like, so is that something? So that's an early influence, but it's also something that you kind of still would consider like an influence now as well. Yeah, definitely. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for me, my my cousin Ben, uh, whenever he was younger, he had got these CDs from his cousin. It was like a Blink-182 CD, and one of them was an Eminem CD, but I had this wallet my sister had gave me, and he was like, hey, if you give me that wallet, I'll give you this Blink-182 CD and this Eminem CD. And I was in second grade, so, you know, and it was, I remember my friend Trevor came over, and he went back home singing one of the Eminem songs, and his oh mom God. called my mom and was like, hey, <laughs> he's the got your kid yeah. doing it. <laughs> But uh, she didn't get, you know, my sister came in and was like, hey, you have, you know, what you've been listening to or something like that. And and I was like, oh, yeah, check this out and turn it on. She like opened my CD player, got it. And she still had it in her CD case a couple of years ago. I found it. And I was like, whoa, dude, you got it. <laughs> Is it the Marshall Mathers? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. That thing's so brutal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh, but I, I had the Blink-182 CD was the, the live one. And it was like the, the Mark, Tom, and Travis show. And I remember it taught me how to cuss. Taught me some good, how to write good, you know, punk songs. Uh, or some poppy ones, you know. But yeah, but yeah it's uh, that for me. And then in middle school, I got into more punk stuff okay yeah yeah. Yeah, because it's funny like i started out listening to rap um actually eminem that album i didn't but i didn't get the dirty version (laughs) my my mom made me (laughs) buy the clean version so i i assumed that that was the way the album sounded right with all the cuts in them and with like the 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 clean words or whatever over it man like when i first heard like i think I, i first heard kim Mm. Like I, my, my cousin had that, you know, he had like the dirty version of the album and I heard Kim like, for the first the time fuck? and I was like, what the yeah. fuck? Like I was like scared almost, you know, I was just a kid. It was crazy. Yeah, cause <laughs> Kim's not even on the clean one, right? No, yeah, it's, like, um, we can't even. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, no yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. I right? imagine that. <laughs> like the whole song is it's just like silence. Oh, uh, speaking of Blink-182, they do that on their clean. It's like that Merry Christmas. I've got two fucking presents or whatever on the clean version. There's no words. And then at the end, it just says. It says some line at the very end of the song. So it's just an instrumental, basically. Yeah. Oh, my God. But, well, well, on the edited version. That's so yeah, funny. That's funny. Yeah, that's yeah. Funny. yeah, but, <laughs> man, that, yeah, that shit was crazy. Um, so then when did you guys start playing your instruments? Like, what Like what were your first instruments first? And then, I, well, I guess it's the same question, actually. Go ahead. No, well, different part of the question, but yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I started on bass for the same reason. The dude who showed me real punk rock, they wanted to start a band, and the him and our friend Cody were like, well, we're playing guitar. And I was like, well, we can't have three guitar players. I'll play bass. So yeah, but that was probably like seventh grade. I didn't really get like serious quote unquote till, I don't know, ninth, 10th grade, I guess. That's yeah, still pretty early. We though. were in a band together. Yeah. In okay. ninth and 10th grade. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was like seventh grade. I started playing guitar. I saw a sign on the side of the road that said guitar lessons, call this number. And I like memorized it or wrote it down or something and went home and told my mom, like, I really would love if, if I could get some guitar lessons and in, in gruff, I played drums and sing, yeah, right. but, but I started out primarily just as a guitar player singer. That's what I did in the band that we were in. And, uh, yeah, our buddy Barrett, he, uh, we, he got it. He showed us a bunch of the bands that, that we like now and stuff. And we were, you know, uh, I don't remember if that's how we, I got in the band with him. No, no, no. How I got in the band with them is I would go to the practices because we had a mutual friend that was, or like our, the guy that played bass in my band 
play guitar in their band. Okay. And so I started going with them and stuff. And uh, he didn't want to go. One day it was super hot. I remember it was super hot outside. It was like 106 degrees, super humid. And uh, maybe not that hot. I don't know. I don't know how the hell hot it was. But, <laughs> but it was super check, hot. Check it, guys. It was, check it. Yeah, Probably it was super hot. hot. <laughs> but uh, he didn't want to go the, you know, that day. And I was like, I'll go. And I had been just watching what he was doing. So I just kind of already like memorized the songs and just went and just played a bunch of them. And then I played some of my original stuff and we just were like, all right, that's what, well, this is what we have to do. Really? Yeah. You know? Wow. Yeah. And then, so then when, excuse me, when did you start playing drums then from there? Okay. So I always kind of hopped on the set. So my dad, oh yeah, he, he got me a guitar, a guitar amp. I actually started playing bass. I forgot about that part. Yeah. Yeah. I played bass before I got the guitar lessons. I just had a bass and kind of messed around with it, learned some aerials by system of down a little intro and nice. stuff but um yeah okay so <laughs> so drums <laughs> drums. <laughs> drums yeah drums i he had also got a drum set because the guy that was going to play drums didn't have a drum set so we just had it set up in my house that was where we we practiced at a little shed behind the house okay and so i would just go out there and play you know because i mean it was for our drummer but i mean it was like you know, yeah it was not? i got it for christmas yeah. you know i was like technically mine so i just started playing then and i kind of sucked and then a few years ago my buddy that cameron that i was saying uh was in the band bougie in the high rise uh check him out great ska punk band um so he would just he had a bunch of songs and we started jamming together i rented a little studio space where i had a room you know mm -hmm. and uh and i was just like hey dude just come jam you know and then our friend uh, Max is in this uh, really popular reggae band in in Louisiana called. Uh, well, they 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 broke up now, but they play like reunion shows sometimes. And uh, he he you know was like, hey, we'll give you. I think it was like four hundred bucks or something if y'all play if y'all open for us. Oh, sure. And so we started a group, and then our friend Barrett, who uh, he actually he passed away now. Oh, so I'm sorry, it's, it's crazy. It's it's okay, um, but. He, he, Jesse Cran had quit his, or he was about to start a new job and he had a little bit of time in between jobs mm -hmm. and Barrett had been talking to both of us and my, uh, my family was going out of town to Disney world for like mm -hmm. a week and a half or something. And so he talked to both of us separately and then it was like, Hey, wait, 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 wait a minute. Cran's going to be you know, in between jobs and your family's not going to be there. So why don't y'all record something? And I was like, yeah, great. And we, you know, he came over to the house and just spent the night there for like a week and a half or something. And we just, we recorded like 13 songs, I think, or 12 songs and just kind of, he had wrote a bunch of stuff and we just made up words on the spot and stuff and used this old digital oh, yeah. recorder. <laughs> and what was it? It was a Roland shit. I don't remember the numbers, but it was... It was just like a, like, kind of like, almost like an eight-track kind of thing? It was an old multi-track, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a four-track or something, right? No, it's an eight-track. Eight. Okay. It might as well have been a four-track. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, our buddy Cameron that's in Bougie and the High Rise, he did some of the vocals, I did some of the vocals, and uh, we kind of realized, oh, like, these are some cool punk songs, you know? And then uh, about, it must have been about a year, a year after that, because he lived in Houston. Yeah. I guess I didn't at really mention time. that. At you the time. lived in Houston? Yeah. yeah, for about four years. Oh, wow. And yeah. it's it's like two hours away from where we live. So that was why, like, you know, our friend Barrett was like, hey, he use should come. Time. Yeah, use yeah. this time. Yeah. He can come to, to town. And um, so he was, after that album was done, we uploaded it to Bandcamp. And then he moved, went back to Houston and about a year later or so moved back. That, yeah. And that's and, when you guys started Gruff. Yeah, 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 yeah. For real, for real. Right. Okay, I see. That's we, interesting. So yeah. you guys had material before you were even yeah. a band, technically. A little that's bit. Interesting. <laughs> well, it's funny because, like, on your Facebook, like, you're about, like, you even mentioned that, like, oh, we recorded this thing, but then we recorded, you know, Are You Gruff Enough? And that you, I guess you guys were saying that you felt like that was better, is what yeah, you were mentioning. Yeah, that's like, the, we think of that one as, like, the first actual album. Okay. Yeah, yeah. the other one was just kind of, like, to see the potential of, yeah. like, what we could just kind of make yeah. together. Yeah, like, almost like if you're trying to figure out if you guys are going to mesh well and all yeah, that shit. Right. Yeah, right, yeah. And we kind of knew that we would because we were in a band together in high school but it had been a few years since like we played music together yeah it had been a yeah. a while what i mean 
eight years or so. Yeah. Or no, no, more than that. I mean, it was from ninth grade to whenever we were 26 or 27. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's like... F- yeah, you guys have known each other for a long 15, time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, since we were in... You were in... We were in middle school. Yeah. Each other, yeah. So. That's crazy. Yeah, so, something that I kind of noticed that you were saying is that it seems like there was a lot of bands forming in your area, but there's still no scene. That's a mm. weird thing. So, our friends that I keep mentioning, Bougie and the High Rise, they, like, moved to New Orleans. And I was actually playing rhythm guitar, like, before they ever played a show. And we would wake up at 5... We would wake up at 4.30 and be at the studio at... 5 a.m. and practice till 7.30 and then we all had jobs at 8. Oh my and fucking God. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> and they had the, the bass player, Chris Lanthier, who had, he actually mixed our album, uh, Lend Us Your Ears. He's the best. He worked at a studio in New Orleans called Festival Studios and Rick... Uh, Nizer, Nazer, Nizer, I think it is. <laughs> he let us set up a room in the in the back that was just, you know, our, our amps and our drum set and stuff. And so we had snakes running from that room to the control room and we were recording like all our jams. So we, somewhere there's some cool, (laughs) you know, little practice. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's, that's, that's fucking badass. So you pretty much think that's what happens. People form and then they know they have to move basically. Yeah. It's either that or it just falls apart. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because three hours is three hours. That's like from here to Miami, which is where we're from. And we, that drive, that drive's rough, three hours, you know. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it sucks. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's not fun when, especially like when I first moved or when we first moved up here, we were driving down there often to like visit and stuff like that. And yeah, dude, like to do that every once, probably once a month, man, like that shit takes a toll. Yeah. You know? (laughs) Because I mean, that would be the normal amount to play. In, yeah, in like a your fa- a month, like the yeah. famous area of your of your state would be once a month. So right. that, that's a lot of gas money and a lot of time, and then you have to hope you get the show. Uh. Yeah, I hope you hope you make some money. Yeah, I hope you make yeah. make back what you spend. And most of the time, you're gonna go out and you're not making any money. <laughs> yeah. it's just burning a hole in the pocket there. Which yeah. I feel like I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but I do feel like now, like I feel like the touring act gets kind of like they get treated better than. Then you know, do you know what I'm saying or no? We have had, a, I mean, just for you know, this this is our first tour, okay. and, and that's exciting, by the way. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> we're, we're, we're excited about it for sure. Um, and so we've only had to sleep in the van one night, mm-hmm. and I, so what we did is got some camping air mattresses that are only you know like that thick, and uh, we just been blowing them up. We using the the out an outlet at whatever venue we play at, and then we basically stack all our stuff to the back of the van, and then we just have space. I mean, there's plenty of room. Mm. You know, it logistically, logistically for just two of us. I mean, it works perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our our friends uh, in this band, Sick Ride, they're they're a two piece as well, and they uh, at the first show we played, we were talking to them about touring and stuff because they're like. They're just stay on the road. And he said, logistically, dude, two pieces are the way to go. Yeah. And we always joke, anytime that a two piece gets brought up, yeah, we say logistically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've met, a, we've met a decent amount of two piece bands that they, all they do is tour like the whole year. Yeah. Like they don't have day jobs. They just, that's their day job. It's yeah. just touring and like they make a living off of it. And to be honest, like there is something to say about that, you know, where you're basically, I mean, you've made it if you're technically playing music, yeah. you know, th- every day and you're living, you know, like that's there you go you're a career musician it's just like difficult to do if you if you like having a home base which i do personally you know that's kind of right. tough to do but i don't know we and we're, we're not a two-piece we're a four-piece but but regardless um i have <laughs> funny thing uh one i think it was probably my first tour not with this band but with a different band i ended up having to sleep in the van like in the seat just up yeah. it was it was full four people yeah and it was cold as shit so and obviously you had to turn the van off it was like 30 yeah. degrees it was in north carolina dude it was <laughs> it was cold last last yeah. night like waking up this morning uh whoo. it was frigid yeah, yeah, I guess there was a, there was a cold front that came through. Yeah, last it's gonna night, get colder sure. tonight too. I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, like yeah man. <laughs> um, so is it? Does it not get cold? in? I feel like it, it gets cold in Louisiana, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah it, it gets, you know. colder. but we don't notice because we sleep in you know a house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Once you're inside, yeah. you know, you're on socks. You're fine. That's funny. Yeah, no, that shit was. Uh, 
that I don't I don't think I ended up sleeping that night. I couldn't like when you can't lay down, you're just sitting straight up and you're just like I, I have no like heat or anything. Yeah. yeah. It's not great. But it was an experience and I'm glad I went through it. <laughs> yeah. Um Okay, so I kinda wanted to I wanted to go through the two the two first releases. Um and the fact that they're DIY, I mean I think that's awesome and they sound good. I mean I I, I can hear what you're saying with the first the first release and the second room. The second one is definitely better in my opinion, but I think the first one is still good as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Like it's for, for I mean, what did you guys record? You guys recorded you said on that four track, right? Yeah, and the drums, oh my gosh. It was <laughs> it what the what we recorded the bass drum with was a radio shack. It literally said yeah. radio shack on the mic. <laughs> really? yeah, and it was equipment. Yeah, because we just we were like, yeah, let's just see what songs we write. And then as we realized, like it kind of had the songs had potential. We were like, oh man, yeah. Yeah. all these mics are shitty. Yeah. And he had the he actually we had other mics at our buddy's house in town, and we just kind of didn't think about that. Yeah. Had a perfectly good set of drum mics. Yeah, I don't know what we were doing. Like as we finished recording the drums, we we're like, wait a minute, but he had those over there. What were we thinking? But. We it it we still sounds, you know, it's you. You can hear what we're trying to, yeah, what we're trying to put across. So that's all that matters. Well, and also sometimes I feel like that adds to the sound. You know, like if you're like if you're going for a lo-fi thing, like that's cool. Sometimes, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it right. works. Right. It just depends on what you're doing. I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with. Um, with MF Doom, do you know I MF Doom? I am. Yeah. <laughs> so like his stuff is recorded on really like like kind of like low quality yeah. microphones, like almost like basically like the cheapest microphone you can buy. I mean, I love his stuff. Yeah, it's and great. It, yeah, it One sounds very raw, you know. But that's the kind of sound he's going for. You know? Right, right. It just depends. Oh yeah, that's definitely what we got on that first one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, I feel I kind of feel that way about our stuff. I mean, we did everything in house as well, and. I mean, we don't have anything. I have this and a couple mics and then just Pro Tools. That's it. Nice. I don't... in like three or four different places. Yeah. Oh, and three in a span of like six years, I yeah, think, or something, something like, that. like that. Yeah, because he ended up re-recording on top of old stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, but yeah, that's... We're transitioning from that now. It's kind of similar to what you guys are doing. So now you guys have someone else mixing and mastering it. You guys are still tracking everything. Yes. And I'm assuming now you have like, upgraded your equipment as well, right? Yeah. So so we have a we use a Universal Audio. Uh, it's a, a an Apollo X8P to to track, and then we actually use the same Scarlett uh, mm-hmm. that, folks, right? Uh, that you have to like run more tracks you know to to just have like four we we only could get four like more out of it which is a eight it had eight channels but for some reason it was only connecting four so we use that for the drums and everything and then for guitars we we did put like four yeah we mic the hell out of it yeah what was it <laughs> like six mics or something on the yeah guitar. there's like yeah. one on each yeah. speaker and then there's like a di yeah. oh, there was shit. a lot yeah. yeah so okay and and this is like this is like getting into the weeds of of stuff but like how do you how do you route that to be able to do the more channels how do you do that because i don't know how to do that you have to create an <laughs> aggregate group on your uh i'm pretty sure it's on your settings on your computer i forget exactly what it is but you connect both of them uh together and then you set that as your you have to go to like studio setup in the program and then set instead of using like the focus right as your output Mm -hmm. um you would set it as the aggregate group which is both them connected Uh, yeah because we we actually want more yeah yeah you always want more so somebody i was talking to from sweetwater told me which i was talking to my buddy about it and he was like what like how he did he was like i don't think you can do that bro and i was like dude the dude from sweetwater like he (laughs) i because i kind of questioned him i was like what no, uh, but he's trying to make a sale. So he, yeah, <laughs> he told me that you could take, you know, basically what you have right here and get a, a like a PreSonus, I think Digimax XD, I think is, I think uh, is the name of it, but it's a pre, you know, eight channel preamp mm-hmm. and you could actually run it as eight more analog channels. So 16. Yeah. And it, but it's not an actual interface. It's just a preamp like, which oh okay i see so, so i like don't almost like an extension yeah kind of and you can still put like plugins on all the channels and everything like that so um, that just probably means that on the um the other screen i guess the editing one you would just choose it probably gives you just the rest of 
of the the analog one. So when you record, you would just choose that one. And so it's like making it like you have more. Right, mm. right. So yeah. it's possible. That yeah, I've never music. done I'd it. I'd have to yeah, see it, though. Tried it yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to do it because we borrowed our friend's uh, Scarlet for the for the Lend Us Your Ears album. And it was it kind of gave us some trouble. Like we, yeah. we uh, yeah. <laughs> so we recorded in the living room at my mom's house because it has like 30 foot tall ceilings. And yeah. the drum sound from the first album to the second album is way better. It's like Just big too. I'm assuming they got like a big sound. Yeah, yeah. we did. And um, so it was like it, for like two days, I think, we couldn't figure out how to connect both the interfaces mm -hmm. together. And yeah. Um, <laughs> It was right around, like, right after Thanksgiving, my mom was trying to decorate for Christmas. And I was like, yeah, we'll have it out in, like, three or four days for sure. We'll get the drums done. And then all that stuff happened. And I ended up, my mom, my dad, uh, when he was still living, bought this uh, bridge for my mom. And it was in the front yard, and this hurricane or storm came through, and it knocked it down. And she's always, like, talked about putting this other little bridge in the yard. And I was like, I'll buy you the bridge if you just let us record these drums in the living room. Just I'll get you the bridge. And uh, so, yeah, so that's what we had to do. I mean, that's pretty much the only Because you ended up getting it to work. Yeah, when we you were that. supposed to. Be yeah, well, yeah, right, right. Like the next day, we I ended up asking some people that work at the Lake Charles Music and stuff, and they got on GearSluts.com and like sent me some links, Forums, you know, yeah, of yes. how to troubleshoot it. And uh, it was stupid. What what was wrong was like I downloaded the the wrong driver to run the the Focusrite. Like it was like a they had made some kind of other. It was like the 2.0 or something like that or some other version of it that I didn't like really notice that it was a different wording. Mm -hmm. So it was stupid on my part. Trust me, I would do exactly the yeah. same thing. I am not savvy. Like I am so basic with all this stuff. Like it's literally taken me, I mean, years to, to like kind of figure this shit out, get nice. it to a point where I feel relatively comfortable. But even then, like it's people... It's like never ending though, especially like with, with new things coming out. It's oh, like you'll oh, never, yeah. you're never quite done. And someone no. is always going to tell you something that you're just like, you just blew my mind. Yeah. yeah. I've been doing this other freaking retarded way. Yeah. You know, and there's like a simple way of doing it and stuff like that. Yeah, so. it's mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. yeah, our buddy, uh, Chris Lanthier, he... If anybody needs anything mixed or mastered or any questions, hit him up on Facebook. Um, but... He, he just, I mean, anything, you, all kinds of, like, even whenever we were trying to get the stuff set up on the computer, the people from Sweetwater, like, they were like, dude, we, we kind of don't know what's going on, what's the problem is, and he just fixed it. Like, he just tried he something. Yeah, and he used to work at a studio in New Orleans that had a, a guy there, Rick Neiser. Okay. That he was super knowledgeable. He made all kind of, he had all kind of gadgets and stuff that he, like, weird, like, he made his own, uh, this program that did like all their booking and or all the, the invoices and stuff. He like awesome. designed a program. So it was like just all this mad scientist stuff at their studio. That, really? Yeah. Sick. It was super DIY. That's know? cool though. Yeah. yeah. We, um, we just met, um, we just recorded at this place that this guy had like built his own preamps and stuff like that. And oh, I was like, I love that stuff. Fuck man. I that was like, awesome. to get into that kind of shit where you're like building your own sound like that. Like that's, I wish I can get there. I, I don't know. I was um, like, who are you talking about? And then I realized who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, that guy, he's like, went to school for all that stuff. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I built this and I built that. And I'm like, well, fuck, you know? Yeah. I want to learn the that thing. stuff. That's the thing. I'd I've like never... to get into making fuzz pedals myself. Yeah. But that, there's, there's a, we have a, a guy out here that, that has like, he makes pedals and stuff like that. Uh, shout out to Morgan, uh, Lucid Sonic devices, but he makes some pretty cool stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, that would be ideal to like start getting into that stuff because that's really, I mean, think about it. It's like you're making like custom sounds yeah. in that in that aspect. You know what I'm saying? And like I'm now like looking. At, I don't know what kind of gear you guys use, but like I have a Les Paul, and I'm like thinking about getting something else now. Like I don't know, it's just, like fucking heavy as shit. Yeah, we recently talked about that. Yeah, because he has an SG. And, it's uh, an Epiphone. Come down. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's light as fuck. Dude. Yeah, it's that's nice. what I was thinking about getting an SG. Man, I'm not gonna lie. And with those two cutaways, you can hit. I mean, not that I can play solos and shit, but you can hit every note theoretically. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, it's pretty nice. So it just, theory, you know, if yeah. I wanted to. Because like the main thing is like I didn't want to take away from like the tone. I wanted something similar, like burst bucker tone. You know what I'm saying? And like yeah. that, and I feel like the SG would be like the most similar to it. Probably. Like yeah. I don't know. Does the body, like the actual weight of the guitar, does that actually add? Do you think it does actually add? I don't. I don't know. Know. 
right? I don't yeah. know. I mean, because strats, I feel like that I've heard some super awesome tones out of strats, and they're not super heavy. Yeah. 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 There's not much to it. Yeah, but yeah. but yeah. Les Have you thought about are... Les Paul Junior? Huh? You thought about Les Paul Junior? Is that is that a lighter weighted one? Yeah, like they kind of got two cutaways. I think they usually got like one pickup kind of towards the bridge. Those no. seem nice. I don't think I've ever played one before. Actually, yeah, I mean, it's cool. <laughs> who plays one? Brian Baker. Brian Baker. Yeah. Bad Brian Baker. Oh, no. both were right. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, are those are those P90s on that? I think so. Usually, yeah. I like P90s. Those are cool. Yeah, yeah. I played them on like a Jaguar. I think is it oh, Jaguar or Jazzmasters that have them. They're both the offsets. I'm not sure which ones got which, but I want the goddamn Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. <laughs> I <want> it. Yeah. <laughs> Last night the uh, Bornite Bornite Carnation. Yes. Uh, that we played with. Uh, they're from Tampa. Oh, uh, for real? Yeah. The the guitar player Sasha had a really cool guitar. I don't know if it was a. It was a Dan Electro, okay, but it was I like an offset. I thought it was a Jaguar. So I got looking at it and I was like, oh no, this is. Yeah, he's on some shit. Badass guitar. Those are but, interesting. Interesting, man. Those are yeah, like I had the I lipstick feel, pickups, you know. Yeah, I don't. You, I feel like you don't really see them don't too know. much either. Yeah, like it's like almost like a rarity shit. to have one, you know. Yeah, yeah. He had like a or, like cream orange. It was yeah. cool. Or I don't know if that's a. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was a, it was a, it's not it was a finish nice. I've seen a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's badass. Um, okay, so oh, I already kind of asked you this question, hmm. but I did kind of want to get a little more into the details of like actual like. So you kind of spoke on on the on the first recordings that you guys kind of didn't have like the I guess the microphones that you have now I'm assuming um, so for this for the set or I guess we considered your first thing did you guys like upgrade the microphones as well like what are you guys using in that aspect Okay so for the drums on the first record we use the Audix uh, it's just like an Audix like kit there's like seven mics that comes with it. And for the overheads, for the symbols, for that, for the first record, we use the the Audix overheads, little uh, mics, uh, condenser mics that come with that. Like a little pencil condenser. Yeah, and um, for the second one, our buddy Cameron, he uh, he had a uh, Aston Origin, and I found one at the pawn shop. I yeah. went into the pawn shop one day, and there was one. They're like, a, I'm pretty sure they're like three or four hundred. Okay. And I went in the pawn shop, and there was one for like one twenty. And I was like, dude, I'm getting it. That's destiny. Fucking awesome. Yeah. And then he, you know, I, I was like, dude, I got the same mic you got for 120. He was like, well, dude, next time y'all record drums, you know, I'll let you borrow it. And instead of using the overheads in your drum mic kit, use those as the overheads. Okay. You know, and, uh, and I feel like that plus the huge room that we did it in, we got a way fatter sound. Isn't it interesting how like the sound of the room is so important to the way the drum sound? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, cause I didn't realize that until we record because we were recording in like a storage unit and it was kind of big. I would say it's probably a little bigger than like this area here. And it it just like we we've recently kind of treated that room with stuff to make it dry. And I'm just like if if, to me, it feels like a little easier to like kind of like go for the sound that you want, you know, because like doing it in a huge room would also be it'd be cool to have like that aspect as well, but then also be able to do this kind of thing too. And I I don't know necessarily think in this kind of like environment we could possibly do that, but it is crazy to me how no, like that thirty foot ceilings is that that's I mean yeah that's almost like natural really, reverb. You know what I'm you saying? Can't replicate that sound. That's yeah. probably like. Yeah. This that, sounds like tinny, I feel. You yeah, know that's what, what we got on the Ari Gruffinoff album. The highs are just overbearing because it was a small room with a damn window right next to it, you know? <laughs> it's not a good setup. Yeah, we should have hung some blankets up or something like that, you know, oh, yeah. kind of took out some of those highs. But we just didn't really know what we were doing. And, yeah. You know, no, but we were very pressed for time. Yeah. yeah. It was just do or die. Yeah, our buddy Cameron, he had got the, the, the Apollo, the mm-hmm. interface, and so the guy that plays drums in his group, uh, Jordan Lewis, he was coming from new Orleans to record some stuff in the room. And, um, so basically like after he, we let, you know, him use the room and everything. He was like, you know, y'all need whatever y'all need. And I was like, well, dude, can we bar the interface like for a little second? He was like, Oh man, I really want to like start mixing these songs. But I'll let you use it till like Sunday. And so we did 10 songs in like five days. And actually, he did all the guitars on his birthday. It was cool. Wow. You know, I didn't even get him anything yeah. for, for his birthday. I'm sorry, dude. It's fine, dude. It's fine. <laughs> I was just like, all right, we got to do these guitars, yeah, do bro. Work. How long did it take? 
from like two to midnight. Yeah, he worked that day. Yeah, too. <laughs> I went to work from like seven to two, and then got off work, and was like, all right, let's go to my real job now. Yeah. Holy Dude, shit! Fucking guitar. Yeah. Well, that's that's when you know you love it, though. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you're doing that type of shit. It was awful, and I would do it again every time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you killed yeah. it, though, dude. Well, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so then I have, I have a question. Then, do you think and like kind of like being forced to do something in like a time period like that do you think it could be a good like a positive thing in some aspects or do you think it's negative i think it it both it has its pros and cons yeah. like some of the songs like some of the okay one of the songs in particular we've wrote like a this whole kind of different intro and this outro part for it and I wish it could be on the album, yeah. but at the same time, it's like we would have never opened some of the doors that we did in the in the amount of time that we did mm -hmm. if we would have just like waited to finish writing it. So, I guess for like anybody, a lot of people, you know, I notice with a lot of musicians, like they they want things to be so perfect, yeah, and uh, you know, they spend so much time like working on this album. It's like just record it, yeah. And just, if you come up with a better version, like by all means, just put it out you know i know record it again and put record it, it again part two or something yeah. or yeah, revised dude. or remastered or yeah i've whatever. never been mad when a band puts out a new version or something yeah. that's what i was actually about to, i was literally gonna ask you that question like what do you think about that yeah because i i for the longest time like i had this weird feeling of you know if it's if it's been released then that's it you right. never touch it again but like well technically for our album we ended up re-releasing re a couple songs but now it's like I, I still I'm kind of still pondering if if I'd be into interested in doing that yeah. because I can definitely tell you right now like we could definitely re-record songs in the album that we'd be happier with now. Right. You know we what could re-record that entire album. <laughs> I get that. That's rough. I mean, <laughs> we it would be rough, but honestly, like uh, it would sound so much better now. Yeah. Like I mean, even like me and my playing, like. I'm like, there's so many songs in there. I'm like, why didn't I do a fill there? Yeah. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it was because it was three o'clock in the morning. I had played it 20 times already. Right, yeah. And I was done. Yeah. And I yeah. was like, I just nailed it. Uh, I was on the click. So let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. You know, so it's like sometimes it just, it's just like that, you know. But oh, yeah. What songs <laughs> did you record? Same thing for me. I feel like with the fills, you know, it's yeah. like, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little things that I'll hear. It's like, oh, that would have been so cool. if I, yeah. Even like, even just a little boom, boom, pat, pat, boom, pat, you know, yeah, instead, instead of, of boom, pat. pat. Yeah. Ba, yeah. 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 So, so, okay. So what, something I noticed that happens to her sometimes is like, we'll record a song. And then as we continue playing it live, she'll kind of like alter it. Does that happen to you as well? Oh, yeah. absolutely. And then that's when you like go back and you're like, fuck, I could have put that in yeah. there instead. Right. Yeah. yeah. I know some people that will actually like almost like change their song a little bit, you know, oh, like yeah. like live. And and I'm like, man, that actually would have been cool. cool. Well, yeah. yeah. I was, well, what Cran says sometimes, like, dude, let them just, they just have to see it live. They just yeah. have to come see yeah, it. It's like so a little. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. yeah. like a good example for us would be like Sidewalk. Sidewalk was a song that that we learned and then we recorded. Mm -hmm. Instead of having the amount of time I have with it now, recording it now would be a good idea. Yeah. But again, it was just kind of like it's now part of the album and now needs to get done and released. So we just did it. But like, you know, the song's a little bit slower. I don't do the fills that I do now. Like right. it could have been different. I feel like that it, we're the only people that will notice those kinds of things. Like if the song jams, it jams. Yeah, you know? That's right. true. Yeah. You know, that's actually a really good point. Yeah, because like. Yeah, the, I feel, well, that's the thing, too, is, like, it's hard to get out of your head with that kind of shit. You know, you're always going to be your biggest critic, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, like, that's that's another thing, like, because I, I think we have something similar right now where you guys are having someone else mix your album, and, like, we are now kind of going into that territory, too, where it's, like, I feel like it would be interesting to get a different perspective on like our sound, you know, is that kind of like what you guys are thinking or is it just, you just wanted, I don't know, someone more experienced. Maybe I have no idea. What, it's kind of that. And like, we've known Chris for a long time. We like a lot of the same shit. So it's like, we kind of knew, we knew it was in good hands. Yeah. We could trust yeah. him for sure. And yeah. it just some of the plugins and stuff that you have to mess with the sounds like on the first record, the bass drum, like I feel like nah, it's not there was, enough. yeah, there's some parts where it, it just, if it would have been boom, boom, yeah. you know, just rocking and it's kind of weak. It just kind of, you know, oh, we just, have the and, same and, thing too. and yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. So once I heard that and the, okay, what happened was one day you were at work and I recorded, you know, I played, I just played a drum beat. I recorded myself playing a little drum beat and then just went on the guitar and the bass made up these little parts, made up a little vocal part, uh, 
our buddy Chris, he lives in Hawaii right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had bought a little universe, a two channel universal audio. And he's like, dude, please send me something I can like mix and mess with, you know? They're like, let me record something real quick. And, um, Recorded something, sent it to him, and he sent it back to me. And like the bass drum just boom, boom, cap, boom. You know, I was just like, holy shit, dude, you have to do the next album. And then he <laughs> did it. He was like, yeah, I'll do it. And uh, he actually did he he did it. He didn't charge us for it. So, really? Yeah. So, next time, I mean, we've been super close friends, but, yeah. you know, I definitely, I mean, Chris, dude, I want to pay you for the next <laughs> one. <time. laughs> gotta pay you, bro. That's so nice, man. Yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah. Because honestly, that's, crazy. that's such an important part, too. Yeah. Like, you can sit there and record it, like, perfectly. It's oh, still yeah. going to need to get mixed. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. And then finding the person to do it is difficult. Oh, yeah. How yeah, long? I, um, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I can't believe, like, what tracks we emailed to him, and then he emailed us back. You know, it's just, it's amazing. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of times we'll record something, like, with the first album, we record it, and it's like, oh, we got the take. Like, it sounds good. Mm-hmm. Let's just mix it ourselves, and it'll be fine. People like it. But it's like, you don't realize how much better it could sound. That's right. You know, and, I mean, people, oh, yeah. you know, it's just going to be more successful at that point point yeah it's easier to show people it's it's so i honestly feel like like we have very similar stories here where <laughs> yeah there's a there's a guy that that um that i've sent out other music to uh shout out to jordan um and he kind of makes another project that i'm in and i'll be honest like i wouldn't have thought of the same like the same direction that he took the mixes i would have never done that you know he took like chances that i just would have been like i just would have never thought to do that so it's like cool to like you guys said that you trusted him and that's exactly how i felt as well it's like i trust this guy we like a lot of the same music he's yeah. a good friend of mine let me see what he can do boom perfect you know it was, it was great so it's that's 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 cool man it's it's great to find that because then i feel like that also takes off like a big weight on your shoulders as well it did we talked about that a lot yeah. we we're like dude we're t- all I got to do is the vocals, and then it's like totally out of our hands. You know, and Chris is just <laughs> gonna take key. care of it. All right. And he did. He did. He. Oh man. Because I was, I was like booking the tour and everything, and I kind of made this whole goal list, and I feel like that's really what did it. You know, that's what. That's record. why we're here right now. Is yeah, having a checklist and just being like, all right, we're gonna go on tour, you know, this day, and hopefully we'll have the album done by then, and just doing it all and. I mean, yeah. So at that point, whenever we emailed him the stuff, I was still trying to lock in dates on the tour and like, you know, a lot of places will give you the show, but you have to find the local bands yes. or, or some of the venues we're working at, you know, the smaller venues we're dealing with right now. Um, and that proved to be kind of hard, you know, cause it's like, you don't really know where to look like there's like indie on the move and stuff like that. But a lot of people don't use that stuff anymore. Well, my bad. A lot of people don't use that anymore, you know? Yeah. Indie on the move. and uh, I don't think I've ever used that. Yeah, it's like a they have venues and different... I'm pretty sure they have different bands on there. But uh, some people have sent me lists that just like a... It's a like a... Compilation, basically. It, well, it's like a... It's like a what are those called it's like a not a powerpoint excel excel Mm -hmm. it's an excel spreadsheet thing with all these different we got one from (laughs) was it tallahassee i think or was it here Uh, i don't remember it was creed scott (laughs) sap scott sap's number was on it it was like don't he they're not not active but we got the number on there (laughs) but yeah that's funny yeah i mean the so so this being your first tour i was gonna ask you like yeah it's is you've kind of i guess found out like that it's it's hard to fucking do man on your own it's tough yeah it is but already i mean we've only been i mean it's only like our fourth date that we played on this this tour and uh already like our tallahassee show like everybody was like jumping and dancing and stuff there was only like 25 people or so there but everybody got into it yeah (laughs) no but you know i mean you know it's just it's not like we were playing some huge madison square Garden or something but it was still really badass to that see all these people getting into our songs. And like I said, there's no music scene where we're from. So that was like the first time that that shit's happened. I mean, when we were kids, when we were 14 and stuff, people did that. But it was kind of more, I don't know. I just, We were in high school. So it was like, yeah, yeah of course you're going to dance. Yeah, yeah. Friend. Friend. yeah. Like it was my friends and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It was the first time basically like a group of strangers yeah. like went crazy. Yeah, they were music. like, yeah, like all jumping in unison and shit. And we we're like, oh shit. Yeah, this sick. is This is cool. Have you guys like looked into like DIY houses and stuff like that? Like kind of like house parties? Yeah. yeah. All the, yes. Because I have. love house shows. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are fun, man. For sure. 
Yeah, a lot of the places I hit up, yeah, I think I just tried to book like two. Like I started booking this tour in like November. Okay. So you gave yourself ample time. Well, no, I don't think I gave myself. I think enough a little time. bit more would have been. Yeah, good. Really? I think, October. I think like four four oh, months right. maybe. Yeah, you I know? guess you're right. Um, yeah. Because that's only two months, three months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause like a, you know, I'll see people on uh, some of the the groups that I'm in on Facebook, and they're like, "Yo, you got like a April or July show or whatever." Yeah. I'm like, "Damn." You yeah. Know, like, yeah. But that's what you got to do. That's what you have to sure. do. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> so we we just like the tour that we're trying to do now. We're trying to go up north, and we're we're still like struggling to find like two last dates um, in New York and um, and and Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it it's like such. I don't know if you get stressed out, but I get stressed out like trying to find bands and like you know bands won't respond and stuff like that. Yeah. And look, we worst. fucking we we did that to you. You had to follow up with us, and I'm sorry for that. No, but it's, it's all like good. no. It, it after about the the third, I think it was like a few people didn't hit me back, and then they would confirm the date after I would like follow up. You know, mm-hmm. so I was like, oh, well, that's what you have to do. Yeah. You yeah, know, you just have yeah. to remind them. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm sure a lot of people, it's just their daily life is so, you know, yeah. they're doing their thing. So they're just like, and probably a lot of times it's like, or with the bands, like whenever you, you know, this venue says, oh yeah, y'all can play, just find a couple other bands. And then you, you hit up this band and they're like, hey, we would love to play. Let us get back to you. Then it takes, they have to ask their drummer and yes. their bass player and everybody. And it takes like two weeks. And then three out of four people say yes and then they're waiting on that one guy and you message them and then they read it and you see that they yes. read it and, then and, they leave then, it like that. and they leave it like that because they're waiting on that one guy and they don't want to say no they don't want to say no but they don't want to say hey we're just waiting on one guy and some people be cool obviously and say hey yeah just one more dude yeah. we're waiting on we just, just you, do that just fucking do that yeah. just usually fucking say like, like yeah. just be honest like hey yeah. we're waiting for somebody usually to, to confirm f- usually it's our fucking bass player that's what <laughs> <laughs> yeah fuck you I mean you asshole yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love you <laughs> yeah so it can be it can be stressful yeah yeah, it, it um, <laughs> and, and, and like you just said, like I get it because I'm sure we've probably we've done it, we've done it before ourselves, but like I definitely try and make a point to like answer people like immediately. Yeah, you know, and if I forget, I forget, but at least like, hey, let me let you, I'll let you know, like ASAP. Like I'm interested, I'll let you know, and then they might have to send me another one just to <laughs> you know one more. But like generally speaking, like I try and answer because I know how fucking difficult it is to do this shit, man. I mean, this is technically the i think this is yeah this is our second tour that we're doing and man this one has been a lot harder than the first one i'll be honest yeah this one's been harder why so why do you think so i don't know man i haven't like people are just not responding this time yeah. i don't know what it yeah, is like bands instead like that's that's the issue right now well i guess for rhode island it's kind of both things when, so but I when think is this, the tour it's it's actually next month it's february, in february. Yeah. We're still yeah we're right there so we have um we have three dates booked already i actually gave up on on a wednesday i was like fuck it we'll use that day to drive um and then we have a venue in new york but we don't have the bands and that's on a thursday that's on a thursday and then on friday we have bands but we don't have a venue okay what uh are you in any kind of group like support groups on facebook for this kind of shit i'm in the uh fuck one of the one of the touring ones diy yeah, right. yes that one post- yeah. is that actually, how that's, that's how you okay yeah that's yeah, how you right, right. yeah. cuz that's badass yes it is about, yeah that's, that's, yeah, really that's so helpful we me. wouldn't have been able to be here right now if it weren't for that facebook page yeah, yeah. And they actually helped with um, with a bunch of uh, bands and stuff in, in the states that we were trying to connect. But Excuse the me. bands weren't the issue. It was definitely like the venues in like uh, Richmond and stuff like like no one. Pennsylvania, no one was getting back to us. So we, yeah. we, we dropped those two dates. We were like, whatever. Let's just drive. I feel like now with the internet being such a big thing and like them having the audio tree performances and like all that kind of stuff, it's like really important to just look so legit online mm-hmm. or something, you know, um, to get noticed. Cause there's so many people like with, you know, the DIY thing and everybody kind of being able to have their own home studio. There's so many bands, Yeah, you know? There's, yeah. yeah. So it's like, even as a promoter, it's like, how do I, you know, the right ones. Yeah. Or just yeah. look through all that. You can't listen to every band and stuff. I think like, so, so here I feel that the promoters in our scene here are, 
doing a pretty good job of putting bands that are similar together, you know, on a lineup. So, like, for example, if a band is touring, they'll try and find bands that are similar to that band. And I, f- and I feel like the past couple shows that we've seen out here have actually, like, they've made sense to me. Because, like, sometimes when you play shows and you're touring, you'll play a show with, like, bands that don't sound at all like what you're doing. It's just, like, completely different. And, I, and not that that's a big deal, right. but I do feel like it's better for the show if it's more cohesive. And I'm not saying it'd be exactly the same sound, but just like something similar, something yeah. in the same ballpark. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So people will stay um, more. Yeah, we're like y'all. Yeah, y'all played at Hooch, Hooch and Hive. Is that the name of it? Mm-hmm. We haven't played there yet. Oh, okay. So. Are y'all booked we're to play there? We're going to. I, yeah. I saw it on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. yeah. End, of the, end of next month. Right? Uh, f- yeah, February. Yeah. I emailed them, but you know. Hooch and Hive. Yeah, I think it, I, again. I think it's just a. It, it was too soon. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like, hey, you know, in November, I'm like, hey, do you have a show in January? They're probably already booked. Yeah, then, they're you know? booked out for yeah. sure. They have yeah. like. I think they have like two promotional people book in there. Yeah. Oh, that's no. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 A bar in our hometown used to do that. Have two bookers and who people would get double booked all the time. Really? Yeah. You get a message. Sorry, bro. They accidentally double booked. You. <laughs> oh my God. Cool. Yeah, I don't think that's happened to us yet. Yeah. Like knock on. I knock said on yes. Board. And then I realized it was just you and like you and me. There, yeah. We did like um, an open mic there, but I, that's not, that wasn't like a full band thing. Full you know, show, it was just yeah. me and her. You know, but that I mean I guess you can kind of count that, but yeah. No, 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 don't count it. Let's not count it. <laughs> We've never played Hooch and I have ever. <laughs> but um, but yeah, um, uh, yeah, booking it's, it's crazy, man. Cause like, I I wish like, <laughs> I mean I technically whenever whenever I do meet people that haven't done this yet, I always try and give them like the advice you know that I've learned because I I kind of wish that someone would have done that for me because it would have been a lot easier to do things like faster you know what I'm saying yeah. like it seems like you guys know what the fuck you're doing I mean you're you know you're on tour you know you got your shit going your shit looks good on social media I think it looked professional so it's Thanks. like yeah like it's good and you guys are doing it all on your own you yeah know? yeah it's not easy man it's not, and I see that is a is it is that your record label is that a record label that you guys are signed to uh no we're not signed to any label not I one. mean uh. So it says I enjoy record. Yeah, record? enjoy sound. So I I planned on doing a, you know, cuz I did buy the recording equipment. So I planned on making like a recording like Little company yeah. thing. But I don't know. I I guess I've just been so focused on us doing our thing mm-hmm. that I haven't really I've I've recorded I mean my friend Sarah really that's the only person I think. Yeah. Oh, me and my buddy Jeremiah recorded some stuff, but I feel like as we kind of get more established, maybe there'll be a little bit more time to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so I was going to try to release everything under that, that label name Mm -hmm. and hopefully kind of make it become something. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's not like a, not a record label, not not somebody else. Just literally had this conversation last night. If we should do something like that as well, just like, cause you know, we're, for the first time recording people and getting paid to do it nice. and i'm like should we start something I don't, i'm just like wondering if it's i don't know I don't dude know yeah i idea. mean you know you can make an llc and all the mics and cables that you buy and i mean all kind of stuff like that it can be tax write-offs yeah it was like what ray was telling us yeah yeah you know which the shitty thing about that is putting like compiling all those receipts and all yeah. that stuff like i don't know anything i mean you guys know they didn't teach us in school or anything Something about how to, like that you know, yeah. Yeah, 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 useful information. Yeah, yeah. but um, you know, so. that's a good. I mean, but that's smart. Yeah, that's smart. But it, it's tough. <laughs> that would be difficult to fucking try All and of do. This driving on this tour would have been yeah. Even right you know, even your band. Yeah, even yeah, your your band. band like buying you know a thousand dollars worth of t shirts or whatever that can be a tax write off. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. You're slacking, You're convincing dude. me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, in the LLC, like, even more so. Uh, LLC, I, I, whenever I did it in Louisiana, it was only like $100. That's what that's what um, and my I mean, sister's oven was telling us. It's not that expensive. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure, let's see, if the taxes are, what, like 10% or, yeah. I don't know. I'm sure it would be worth it is all I'm trying to say. At the end of a year, if you're really doing it. Doing it, it yeah. yeah. Which we are. Yeah. Hell Yeah. <laughs> Damn, okay. Well, yeah. I'm going to write that down. Write that down. <laughs> yeah, LLC. Just, just yeah. do Fucking it. do it. Nike, bro. Okay, so what have been some of your favorite cities to play in? Well, Tallahassee was the one that I was saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tallahassee was great. They were all jumping and stuff. And Mobile was cool. I mean, the... Uh, Is that Alabama? Alabama, yeah. So it's kind of like a lot of people... Like, somebody in Tallahassee told us that 
that city gets skipped over a lot, but the place we played the attic at the blind mule, you had to go up some stairs, bring your gear yeah. upstairs. But I mean, shit, there was a lot of people there. Yeah. Write that down. Jot that down. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but that was a nice spot. Yeah. Where else did we play? I mean, Lafayette in Louisiana, that's a cool music town. We, our only show we played there was on a Sunday. So it yeah, wasn't it was a Sunday at a place that's usually closed on Sundays. Yeah. Mm, really? Nice. Yeah. 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 All right. Classic. But, um, yeah. So, other than that, those have been your three dates. Yeah, yeah. So as as Gruff, we've we've. I mean, we haven't played a, a whole no. shit ton of shows. Like, what, three or four shows before the tour. You guys no, are like fucking six or something on like tour that. already. Yeah, yeah. You well, know what's, well, you know, it's like like I said, there's nothing there. There's nothing in the. I mean, there's like a city an hour or so away that has a little bit of a music scene, and then Lafayette's an, uh, like an hour away on the other side east. And there's music scenes in both those towns, but I just figured if we just go on tour, maybe it'll attract attention yeah. kind of a little bit more to where we can. It's smart, honestly. Yeah. I think that's smart because it'll, I mean, you'll just be, yeah, like you said, you'll be in people's fucking like, you know, in, in their, I want to say, I was going to say Periscope. That makes no sense. But you'll be in their minds basically now, like when you come back around, for example, you know, yeah. now I know you guys, for example, you know, obviously it'll be a lot easier to book a show here, for example. Touring is it's it's good it's really good to do yeah. and i wish that we would have started earlier so i'm saying like it's really cool that you guys are doing it right out of the gates like that's great yeah because booking in georgia north and south carolina we've, where we've already played happened pretty quickly mm -hmm. this time yeah and that just makes sense like there's people to start with like hey and if they can't they know you so they're gonna put like point you in the right direction you know so absolutely yeah. have y'all y'all know about the valdosta diy yeah, we're house? playing that one okay yeah, yeah. Oh, alan Svintes or whatever. I can't. I don't know how to say his last name. Is he the one that booked it? Yeah, he's yeah, he's the drummer. I forget his man's name, but um, yeah, that is somewhere where I try to book, and it was like a Thursday. I think that we would be passing through, and he's already booked up. And then I even we were we were gonna play these shows in March in Atlanta with this band Moonkiss, but the promoter like end up merging these two shows. So I thought you were about to say murdered someone. No, yeah. no. <laughs> I, swear, I was like, no, no. whoa, yeah. promoter <laughs> murdered someone, so he's yeah. in jail. So, yeah. <laughs> so the show kind of fell through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the show is at a prison now. Yeah. <laughs> I played that. <laughs> sorry <laughs> no no you're good yeah so they merged the two shows so we're actually not playing the that now um in atlanta but i'm gonna try i just want to keep stay on the road but mm -hmm. now that i kind of realize now that booking only two months out or three months out is not the way to go like we should you know now that it's almost february i mean start booking for the summer or april i want to try to still fill up our calendar for you know we have some shows in february and march but just i need to start earlier now yeah. yeah you know yeah and so basically like i guess i guess a question that i would have is like so what are your i guess what are your goals for the year really <laughs> I, so i have been talking and i don't know if this is like a pipe dream type just my head's in the clouds or whatever but i think that we could get passports and go to europe i really want to go to europe and just like you said, like, just fuck it. Just do it. Yeah. Like, you know, just. Dude, it's possible. Yeah. Well, it's fucking it's, possible. Especially with that DIY touring page. Like, people, I've already got hit up. Like, just posting the album on the DIY page. I got hit up by some dude in Belgium. And he was like, dude, I love y'all shit. If y'all lived here, I would ask if I could sing in y'all's band. If y'all ever need a show in Belgium, hit me up. And I was like. What? Hell fuck yeah. Yeah, I was like, Hell what the yeah. fuck? So you it's like. plan that shit, Yeah. Bro. So it really, my birthday's in September. Uh, when we get back from this tour, I want to, you know, apply for passports and then just start. There's a couple websites, uh, like there's one called Skyscanner. Oh, it's an app and a website, but um, it's like discounted plane tickets. Okay. Like it's like I guess, but it's weird because you can get them really far in advance for discounted prices, which you would think that. I thought that it was like okay, we didn't sell we didn't sell twenty tickets, so we'll sell them to this person at a bulk price and then on their app they'll sell them to people for these cheap ass prices mm -hmm. but it's like okay like right now we could book a flight to amsterdam in september and it'd be like 
like I saw one that was 200 bucks round trip for a week for one person for, yeah to go to Amsterdam that's pretty and cheap yeah. if, if you look $2,000 yeah if you get on like Southwest or Spirit or whatever it's gonna be like 1500 yeah. bucks so you just really have to, so it's almost like I would have to get on there book the cheap ass flight and then book the tour around that you know obviously already have the dates that you're gonna be there mm-hmm. so that you get the cheap ass flight yeah and what you could do as well so which cause I've yeah. thought about this cause I, the next like show that i want to play that's te- technically in the united states but like where we'd have to take a flight would be like puerto rico i want to yeah, play that, that would be and like i've been thinking like how do we do that because like obviously like the gear thing would be kind of difficult yeah, so it'd be like rent. having to rent or asking like one of the bands like hey can we borrow your shit you know what i'm saying what can i take on the plane yeah, yeah. like do you guys have like a big pedal board not really so it's, you can probably take the pedal board with you yeah probably, yeah that would yeah. be ideal yeah i have a pedal i have i use a harmony pedal for vocals okay too. cool so i have it over yeah, by the drum set i want trying to press it and <laughs> yeah shit. yeah yeah i mean yeah it's 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 i have we have friends that have just played in uh they played in ireland nice. um i'm trying to think oh we know people that played in japan like dude totally. like yeah, yeah yeah oh you do which yeah, who uh, was it our friends uh the the good samaritans is their oh, name no, and no. uh our friend Brittany fonts like she went and sang with them uh but it was like a a festival it was called like american fest like or X-Pets. something like that yeah, it was yeah yeah some military is, yeah yeah, yeah, oh. yeah i don't know i've never heard expats but, um, but yes <laughs> it's the right way yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. expats yeah, yeah yeah um but yeah they went over there and killed it dude they you know played for a, a bunch of people but i okay so there's this guy robert i think how you say is like mokin it's like m-o-c-h-e-n he's this dude in texas uh who gets bands from Japan to come and he is in a metal band or, you know, some kind of band that he has a van and amps and shit. So he actually like get, you know, I guess he hits them up and is like, yo, I got everything. Just bring your guitars and shit. Just come. Yeah. Pedal, pedal board and a guitar. And he just, he drives his van and just brings them in the van and books all the shows for him. And like, some of them can barely speak English. Like right now there's this band. I saw it's these three girls and like the, uh, Yeah. Three Japanese girls and the bass player is all tapping and stuff, and they're called oh. Paranoid Void, and they're sick. What kind of music? Uh, it's like mathy rock, uh, but yeah, Paranoid Void. Another one uh, that he brought over was a Silhouette of Nude. They're really good. And um, you said this is in Texas. Yeah, yeah. So he's out of Texas, but he brings them through Lake Charles, yeah. like where we're from. You know, every time, and uh, it's always a cool, like weird Thursday night or something. And like the guitar, the lead guitar player uses this weird, like laser gun that has it has a light on it, and he has a pedal that reacts to light. So it's like a synth thing what? that reacts to light. So it'll, like shoot the little laser, little plastic toy laser gun thing at it and like make it. What? Wham, 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 wham. It's awesome. like a theremin thing. That's fucking weird. Yeah. Dude. That's cool. Yeah. So, so why is he, okay. Why is he doing that? I, I think he just wants to spread the music, I guess. Uh, because I know, yeah, that's like his thing though. He books and he makes like a percentage and stuff. And, uh, but he's just a cool, that's cool still fucking, dude. yeah, regardless. I mean, that's fucking dope as shit. I would expect <laughs> the guy to get paid somehow. That's crazy. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's cool though. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> fuck. So I wish there was, that's the hard thing about like countries like that is like, how do you get a, what do you do? Like find a trans, like how I wonder, I don't know. I don't think he knows Japanese. So it's like, I don't, and I know a lot like the dude in silhouette of nude, like their guitar player was an English major. So okay. maybe that was how he, that you know, him. hit him up or whatever. But Maybe maybe you would probably use something on the internet like you can just like Google Translate or something yeah. and then just like copy and paste it. Maybe so. I don't know. Yeah, but a lot of times you know they're every time they get there you kind of talk to them and say how's it. I was like yeah. bringing up Zelda and shit. And they're like, yeah, we love Zelda. <laughs> but that was it. That was it. You know. Was, <laughs> yeah, I mean that. Well, now I think too. Like, um, I think on certain phones you can talk to it and then it'll like give a response in their language. Yes. I'm sure there's and I there. actually yeah, when they were here I tried to download that app on my phone and it did not do. It didn't do the right shit. Yeah, it kind of was weird and stuff. Like it worked, but he was the guy was just his name was yoshi or yeah his name yeah sick and he was just like sick. doesn't he's like nah dude that's all fucked up. you're, actually, <laughs> you're actually cursing at me yeah, right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. You're really mean to me yeah. right now that is <laughs> that's funny um but yeah that's that that is that that would be 
I mean, that would be sick. And I think, yeah, like I said, I, th- I honestly think, like, any any of us can do it. Like, that is the power of the internet is that we can go and do these things. Now, all we need is the money, obviously, and, like, the resources, I guess. But, okay, so going based off of the internet, so this is another question I had. What are your thoughts on social media slash streaming platforms, and do you feel it helps or hurts music? Look at that. That's oh. a good question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and I do think streaming helps because it's, it's so much easier to get shit anywhere. You know what I mean? It's like you don't have to look for like seven inch or anything like that. It's like you can just fucking find it. It's there. Yeah. Social media thing kind of annoys me because there's times where it's like, oh, we could take a good picture for the internet, and like we're fucking douchebags. But this is how it works now. Yeah, you, know, you got to do it. Yeah. yeah, it's tough, man. But I guess it's better than having to have like masters at a label. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like having to have overlords. Yeah, I don't want that. Yeah, like basically like people controlling what you're trying right. to put out. Yeah, yeah. What, are your, what about you? What are your thoughts? I, I like that it's it's like very available because, I mean, as much as I love music, it's like I don't always have like money to spend on just buying. Yeah, you know, because right. and especially like if the I did, amount I'd be of so broke. Yeah, well, especially like for you, like you listen to so many bands. I mean, I listen to a lot of bands, and for both of us. I feel like if we really wanted to support every single band that we listen to, it'd be very hard to yeah. monetarily to do that. So it's very cool. It sucks that, you know, 0. 0.0006 cents is what you get per play. Mm-hmm. And then if you use a site like CD Baby, they get 9%. So, yeah, so, nothing basically. so I did the math and on a million plays, if you don't, if you upload it from someone like distro kid that doesn't take like you pay a $20 a year, mm-hmm. but you get all your money. Mm-hmm. Um, it's $660 that you would get from a million streams on Spotify. But then if you use CD baby with that 9% being taken out, it's only 600. So from six sixty to 600 would be that 9% difference. And so I feel like it, is worth it um to do that and there's companies now like a guy that i know in lake charles he used to work for universal studios Mm -hmm. and he has like placements on like all these shows on mtv like catfish and keeping up with the kardashians and all these shows on there and he started this company i think i'm pretty sure it's called like multiversal music group and he so like cd baby he's trying to make a thing that Put your music on Spotify and iTunes and all this stuff, but they actually send it out to the playlist and all those like, so, you know, as somebody who just uploads their stuff to CD baby, it's like pretty much your friends or the people that already know about your band are the ones that are going to see it. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't, it's not like it goes on some playlist where they don't promote you at all. yeah. Yeah. So this company multiversal, they, their goal is to, they put it on there for free. And then they get, I think it might be 15% Mm -hmm. or something like that. But so once they make you money, they get a percentage. Okay. So until then it's free, which I asked them about the, I was like, Hey, our album's going to be done in like a week. Do you think we could have our tour starts this day? Do you think we could have it online by then? And he, I actually saw he's on, he is on vacation in Scotland or Ireland. And so I was like, Oh shit. Well, he, you know, I'm not going to like hit him up, message him again about it. He's yeah, enjoying, yeah. he's enjoying his life. So we'll just do it on CD baby. Maybe try to do it next time. Cause that would be really cool. Having somebody kind of help with the promoting part. Cause mm-hmm. I've tried to add stuff to playlists. Uh, and we've got a little bit of, you know, you can get on Spotify for artists and kind of see where the plays are coming from. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's like, well, I just looked at it earlier and it was like 4% or something have come from playlists that we've been added to. So I, I, I think as that, as we, you know, we've only put on like three other people's playlists or whatever. And there's a couple that's like, you send in your song to this email and they'll upload it for you for free or whatever. And it's on this. Where'd you find all that stuff? at? So I've just been looking around, like I'll just type it in. Yeah. Like how to get on a free, how to get on a playlist on Spotify or whatever. And some people want you to pay like a hundred bucks and I don't want to do it. That's whack. But I feel like it could, for some people, it could be badass. you know, especially you got a catchy ass song and stuff. Cause I'm sure it will get some plays, but at the same time, it just, it's just kind of like taking that. It's a risk, man. Yeah. It's a risk. It's a fucking risk. Like we did, um, 
I think we did, um, was it Google Ads? I just wanted to see, like, try it out. And then... <laughs> I ended up not turning it off by accident. I ended up spending like a hundred dollars, but that hundred dollars got us uh, uh, eight thousand seven hundred views on a video on our channel or whatever. And to be honest, like not really that much traction from it. It's not like we got like a ton of like views on our Spotify and all that information's in the description. Right. But I don't know. It's like I think that proves that it's useless, though. I guess. How do you get eight thousand and then? The subscriber, like, it didn't go up, like, yeah. Facebook. It didn't what are you move. saying? Like, you, you almost think they're, like, fake? Like, they just... I don't think it's fake. I just I, I just don't think Google it matters. I stealing my money. Because, like, what is a view? <laughs> a view is someone just clicking on it and then right. stopping 30, it? 30 seconds. You know? Yeah, so 30 it's seconds like, it counts as and one. And then they don't bother looking at, the dis- like, the description or... Yeah, yeah like they don't look at anything else. They, yeah. You know. Like, I feel like... So, I guess my opinion on the social media stuff is, like, I feel like... In order to like really break out like fast, I guess you have to do something crazy. You have to like do something viral. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And it's just like that's not my lane. You know, yeah. like I'd rather do this, for example. Right. I get to meet people. I get to talk to them. I get to like you know learn stuff about them. This is like my lane. Um, but you know, this is gonna take a long time to yeah. like grow, which Absolutely. is fine. I'm okay with that. But it is unfortunate like that good music in my opinion like really good music doesn't get like you know more publicity yeah now you have to have like a video or yeah like you said like a funny funny thing like yeah, it's like having good music's not enough it's yeah. not no yeah, you yeah. have to have a personality you know you have to which i'm like i said like i'm i'm an open book personally like i don't mind talking about myself and all that stuff but it is weird to me to do that in the form of social media this is easy cuz i'm talking to you guys for example yeah, i can right. I can t- talk about anything really, but when it comes to like writing it on Facebook or like on Instagram, it just seems like vapid to me. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. at least this is Good like word. bringing out. <laughs> this is at least bringing out stuff in normal conversation. So if people mm-hmm. learn things about you guys or us, we're just talking, and that's why they learned it. But those like thirty second videos that people do and just spew information out, I'm just kind of like, what the f- just yeah. happened? <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's I don't know, it's just different. I'm not. I'm definitely not the audience for that, you know. And that's another thing, like realizing, like you're not, you're not the audience that is going to be purchasing your music, unfortunately, sir. Yes. You know, absolutely. You, you have to think about the general population, and that sounds so weird saying. Like, I'm not saying that I'm above or below. I'm just saying, like, I'm not that person. You know, I right. don't care for that. All I care about is music. You know. Right. Yes. <laughs> I, yeah. I feel that absolutely. Uh, oh man. I. I mean. It, Writing the song, like the songs that we put on this latest album, I feel like it. Some of them, we it was like stuff that I knew people would be less likely to 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 listen to mm-hmm. or whatever. But I, we love them, you know. It was like fun. Some of them are like funny and stuff, and I feel like that almost the idea that it was supposed to be funny might not come across. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was like, we don't care. We just wanted to do it. And then people will like, I mean, people will eventually, it'll catch on, or maybe it won't, whatever, but we have something that we're proud of, so mm-hmm. that's all that matters. Yeah, that's all I really, honestly, like, that's that's another thing. Is like, at the end of the day, it's like, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, then you're, it's, it, eventually you're just going to stop, you know? Mm-hmm. Or you're going to yeah. hate yourself. And it's like, right. why do that? Let's, yeah. just, let's just enjoy what we're fucking doing here. Yeah. Um, I have... Okay, actually, I think that was that was technically my last question, but I did I did skip over one. I wanted to say something real quick. Go for uh, it. So we, whenever we write songs, like I feel like that's also a very important part of like not giving a shit about what people like commercially will like or whatever. It's like he'll usually how we'll write a song is he'll come to me or like we'll just jam something that he wrote, and I you know I play drums and stuff, and then I'll come up with like a vocal melody, and so. It's like the song never started with like some kind of direction of where it was yeah, no. gonna mm-hmm. go. Like, just, I, just I made this shit up. Let's play it. Yeah, yeah. and then it, like our uh, song on the album, it's called Experiment, but like ear is like a E A R because lend us your ears, you know. So it started as just a, like we recorded the drums, bass, and uh, guitar, and didn't have vocals like at all. Yeah, didn't have lyrics, vocals, nothing. Yeah, and then we just you know the, the lyrics. I just like wrote some shit. And we recorded, and it's like one of our favorite songs off the album, and it's cool because I feel like that if we would have been trying to like uh, like crowd please and stuff, that it, the whole album would have kind of came out different a little mm-hmm. bit. And so I'm glad that we don't give a shit, or like that 
we're not trying to fit into some like scene, like yeah. where we're from, like, Oh, well, we know everybody likes this. So that's what we're going to do. We yeah. just do yeah. what we come up with. You know? Yeah. And, and so I don't like, if there's a band that, for example, um, maybe like they're more experimental but then they have like you know they have a release that's more like poppy i'm okay with that yeah my i assume that they enjoy that right i assume that they're enjoying making that music so i'm like that's cool now when i get into like you know i don't know what's going on here is if like they just literally like digress from any sort of like experimental stuff like they're not even doing any of the old stuff they're just like straight pop now you know that's when you're just like wait are you guys selling out or you know what i'm saying like and i don't know even then you could argue that maybe they do like it but who knows maybe they're like hey we'll do one pop album and we'll appeal to everyone and then we'll hit them with the with the crazy shit (laughs) that's true i mean that's what radiohead did kind of yeah they tricked us (laughs) that's true kind (laughs) of all right so i got one last question for you guys so any crazy road stories so far (laughs) i mean come on you guys are traveling through florida you gotta (laughs) florida man (laughs) yeah Uh, came out of a bush yeah oh I'm trying to think. Um, since we've been on the road, I don't know, man. Not. This is that could be a good thing. I mean, know. yesterday we went to Jenny Springs. I mean, <laughs> swam. Nothing crazy. Really well, crazy that's good happened. too, though. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, I mean, so let me... it's only day four on our tour. True. So yeah, we've, plenty we, of time. We've got some awesome people have like cooked food for us and um, let us, you know, take showers at their place. So just kind of smooth sailing so far. That's good. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Well, okay, okay, so then how about this? We'll uh, table that for the next time that you guys come on. Hell yeah. Right. Sweet. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for coming, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah thanks so much great. for having yeah. us. Wish you luck on the rest of your tour, and thank, thank you. you guys for listening. All right, later, y'all.